Do you have all of your phase three runes? If not, don't worry. Sit back, relax, and join me as we go through how to get all six of the new runes for phase three. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Displace. Phase three has given us six new runes, three for the head slot, three for the wrists. And in this video, we're going to find out how to get every one of them. This includes Carnage, Cut to the Chase, Unfair Advantage, Combat Potency, Focused Attacks, and Honor Among Thieves. The first rune, and one of the easiest, is Carnage. The only requirement for this rune is that your lockpicking skill does need to be at level 225. So, if you haven't grinded that out yet, you should take some time to get that done. The location of this rune is in the Blasted Lands in this tower, which is located right next to Dreadmall Hold. So we're going to need to make our way all the way up to the top of the tower. And as you can see here, I did stealth because I did not know if there was any enemies. Luckily, there aren't, so you won't need to do any stealthing, and you can just run up to the top. Once we're at the top in the room, there is going to be an abandoned cache. We're going to need to open that up, and if your skill is at 225 exactly, you actually might fail one or two times. But once we open up the chest, a murderous lost one is going to spawn. We need to kill that murderous lost one and loot him for the rune. Like I said, easy. Cut to the Chase is the must-have rune for Phase 3, and it's going to require a grind as it requires friendly reputation with the Emerald Wardens. So in order to get to friendly reputation, you're going to need to do Nightmare Incursions. If you're new to Incursions, I have a video that goes over how to do them fast to get maximum XP if you're still leveling, and to quickly get your reputation up to friendly. So this rune is going to probably be the one that takes the longest because it's going to take you a few hours to grind through the rep to get to friendly, which is easy, but it can become boring really fast. So once you're at friendly, there's going to be a quartermaster next to the incursion quest giver, and they are the ones who sell the rune for gold. I think it's a gold and 60 silver. And that's it. That's all you need to do for the rune. Easy, but time consuming. Unfair Advantage is another easy rune to get. You're going to want to head over to the Lost Rigor Cove in Tenaris. And once there, you're going to want to pickpocket uh, South Sea Freebooters until you get a Kidnapper's Coin Purse. So depending upon your luck will depend upon how long this takes. I was actually lucky enough to get this from the first mob I pickpocketed. So once you pickpocket the Kidnapper Coin Purse, you're going to open it up to retrieve a Precious Medallion. Once you have the medallion, you're going to want to head over to Steamwettle Port and talk to Jabby. Apparently, this medallion belonged to his wife, who sailed off and never returned, which is really sad. And for your troubles, he gives you the room. Combat Potency is another rune that's going to take some time to get. This is a multi-step rune that's going to take you across a few zones and dungeons to complete. The good news is that every class is going to be doing this quest chain, so it should be easy to find a group when needed. So to start with, you're going to need to go to the Emerald Sanctuary in Fellwood, located here. There's going to be a troll next to the house that's going to give you a quest called Wild Gods. This quest asks you to go get drought from the trolls in the Hinterlands. Next, we're going to need to go to Jinthalore in the Hinterlands to kill trolls for the drought. These trolls are elites, so if you can find a group, it makes it a little easier. Or, if you're like me, you can solo them. However, it's going to take a little longer. As you can see, I had to sit and eat uh, to heal after every fight. After a while, though, one of them will drop the Wild Whisper drought that you need. Once you have the drought, you will need to go into Razorfin Downs and kill Aminar the Coldbringer. So from the entrance, you're going to head right and up to the spiral to the top. So some classes can actually solo this, but if you're as good as me and die, it's probably best to find a group. So once you kill the boss, you're going to drink the drought, 
and the spirit of Agamangan will appear. Speak to him to get the quest and get Agamangan's roar, which is a horn that you're going to use later. This next step can be done in any one of three dungeons. Zulfarak, Maradon, or Blackrock Depths. The two easiest is Zulfarak or Mara, with the latter probably the easiest as long as someone has a staff to get to the princess. In this example, I did a few Mara runs, and once you kill the princess, a huge ghost dinosaur is going to appear. You're going to use the horn that you got from um, the dungeon to summon him from the ghost form, so you can actually kill him to loot the wild offerings. For Zulfarak, you're going to need to kill at least three bosses to get a ghost spider to appear. For Blackrock Depths, you're going to need to stop and go back and do one of the other dungeons. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. But if you do want to do this, you're going to need to kill three bosses. They're going to be High Interrogator Garston, Houndmaster Grebmar, and the Ring of Law event in order to spawn the ghost, which is going to be on the Dark Iron Highway. So this one's a lot lengthier than the other two, which is why it's not recommended. So you're going to need to do this at least three times, as the quest requires three wild offerings. The easiest way to do this is to do a logout skip, reset the dungeon, and then rinse and repeat. This is why Mara and ZF are the easiest. Now, the wild offerings are used as currency for some gear, including a bag that includes a random Dark Moon fair card. So these range from either 10 all the way up to 15 wild offerings. So it's a good idea if you want some of this gear to spam these dungeons. You can, however, only do five dungeon runs within an hour. So you may become locked out depending upon how fast you do these dungeons. Once you've actually collected all three of your wild offerings, you just need to return back to Felwood, talk to the Shadowtooth Emissary, complete the quest, and she will give you the room. Focused Attack is the easiest rune to get in this phase. So in the Hinterlands, you're going to go to this location. From here, you're going to see a few walls with masks on them. You're going to approach the one that's targetable and use Blind on it. In order to use Blind, you are going to need to use Blinding Powder, and you can either buy it off the Auction House, or as a rogue, you can make it if you have some Fade Leaf. So once you use Blind, a chest is going to appear. You loot it, get the rune. Easy peasy. The last rune we're going to get is Honor Among Thieves. This is our stealth dungeon run, just like in previous phases. However, this time, we're going into Zulfarak. So before we can actually do this quest, we're going to need to have completed the Manor Ravenhold quest and have Ravenhold Reputation unlocked. So once we reach 45, we're going to get a letter in the mail. This is actually not from C, but from Farad in Ravenhold Manor, telling you that C has been playing you. So head on over to Ravenhold Manor and speak with Farad, who tells you that you're going to need to enter Zulfarak to get the Talisman of Kazdor and return it to him. So we're going to head on over to Zulfarak and go inside. This one's pretty easy to sneak around, as the mobs are pretty spaced out. So the Talisman is in a chest, and the key to that chest is broken up into multiple pieces. So in order to get the first two pieces, we're going to need to kill two bosses by throwing a vile concoction into a bubbling cauldron to kill them. The vile concoctions are in clay vessels that are hiding in tents throughout the dungeon. So the first one is in a tent near Entusul, who is the boss in the cave. So we're going to loot the vile concoction and head into the cave. Once in range, we're going to throw the concoction, which is going to explode in the cauldron and kill the boss. We're going to loot the offering of bone from the satchel that's laying next to him. The next closest tents are actually next to the stairs of the pyramid. So we're going to loot another vile concoction and then head back to the witch doctor, who is the boss that's around all of the graves. We're going to throw the concoction into the cauldron and then loot his satchel for the Ward of the Dead. So the Ward of the Dead is a trinket, and we're going to need to equip it, which is going to cause one of the graves to, to light up. We're going to go over to this grave and loot it for the Offering of Flesh. Once we have this, we can combine it with the Offering of Bone and turn it into a Blood Magic Essence. 
before we can open the chest, we're going to need to get one final piece. So from the pyramid, we're going to head right and we're going to need to jump up the wall. Once at the top, we're going to need to stealth our way past the first ledge who has a mob in it and head over to the second one, which has a chest. We're going to loot the chest and that's going to give us a hollow emblem. We're going to combine that with the blood magic essence to create an emblem of blood magic. So once we have that, we're going to need to head all the way back up to the top of the pyramid. And you can't actually jump from where you are at the ledge to the top of the pyramid. So you're going to need to go down and just climb up the steps. So once we're at the top, there's a chest that we can loot to get the talisman of Kazdor. Once we have the talisman, we just return to Ravenhold Manor. We're going to talk to Farad, who will then direct us downstairs to Zan Shiversprocket in the basement. So we're going to head all the way down to the basement, and we're going to talk to this uh, Zen Shiversprocket guy, who's going to add some kind of explosive magic to the talisman, and then ask us to return it to the dead drop for C. It's a good thing we have a mount now, because we're going to have to run all the way over to Pyrude Village. So once we're there, we're going to put it in the chest and then return back to Ravenhold Manor and speak with Farad, who's going to give you the rune for all of your hard work. As a bonus, we also get a cloak with some pretty cool bonuses to our rogue abilities. So this quest is worth it, not only for the rune, but for that pretty cool cloak as well. There you have it. The six runes for phase three that are going to make you a force to be reckoned with. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite rune was to get. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel.